G'day, this is Andrew Price here from BlenderGuru.com and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna be giving you an introduction to a cool new feature of Blender called Anisotropic Shading. So this is a new shading type which was added to Blender in the latest release, which is 2.65. Uh, and this new shader will allow us to create this image that you can see right here. So you can see on the bottom of this saucepan, you've got the light which is sort of bending and reflecting in a strange sort of radial type pattern. Um, so that's exactly what this shader is for. It is for mimicking the look of metal which has been sanded, I guess, in a particular direction. And that's really what this, uh, this shader is all about. So in this very quick video tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you what anisotropic shading is, when to use it, and then how to use it. So I'm gonna be, uh, yeah, well basically we're gonna start by modeling a saucepan, uh, and then we're gonna be applying this exact material that you can see right here. So this is very quick, very easy, and I'm sure this will be a very, yeah, super fast tutorial. So first things first, let's talk about what anisotropy is. According to Wikipedia, anisotropy is the property of being directionally dependent as opposed to isotropy, which implies identical properties in all directions. Now that sounds very complex, um, but essentially it is similar to how a glossy shader will work. So we can use that as a starting example. So the normal glossy shader, I'm sure you're all familiar with it in cycles, you just click on glossy shader. Um, the way that behaves is the light comes down and it reflects off it. And that reflection is the same in all directions. So it doesn't matter if you viewed the, uh, you know, you viewed it from the left angle, the right angle or anything like that. Um, it will be, it'll be the same in all directions. Now, anisotropic shading, on the other hand, the light will come down and it will reflect in a defined grain. So basically the path that you will define as the user when you create the shader, um, which will be where the light will be stretched along. Okay, so let's just, I'll go into Blender now and I'll just show you an example of that. So here you can see I've got a scene of a white ball um, sitting on this reflective surface. So this is just the basic glossy shader that I'm using right here. And you can see, whoops, if I go in properly, there we go. You can see that as I rotate around, the reflection is essentially the same in every direction. Now, if I was to change this and use the anisotropy shader on the other hand, you can see that I now have a grain. So this is a linear type. So the grain of it is now going from left to right. And you can see that from this angle, you get a very different reflection than you would from this angle. So it creates a very interesting uh, material, which is frequently seen in the real world in essentially any metal surface which has been sand, so that's brushed metal, vinyl, all sorts of different things like that. Um, so you can now go ahead and create that uh, using Blender. So it's very exciting and it has a lot of really cool purposes. So let's have a look, this is a real photo. This is some brushed metal. I'm sure you've all seen that before. But you can see looking in this example, the grain of the shader is going from left to right. Now the grain is defined in the real world by tiny little well, not almost microscopic, but you can see little tiny bumps in the surface. And that is basically telling uh, where the light will go, which path it will travel along. So that is, um, that, that's essentially what anisotropic shading is mimicking. So it's allowing you to do that without having to set up a bump map and do it all yourself. Uh, because if you used a bump map with like, let's say like a cloud texture, which has been stretched, um, you would get a lot of noise in there and it wouldn't look quite right. So this anisotropic shader will do it all for you and it will look cool and it will render fast. Um, so this is another example here. This is a radial type anisotropic shader. Um, so you could see that with those, um, that would have been created using like a circular sander, um, those little grooves and stuff. But you can see that, um, it, it creates, it, the light sort of bends around the surface of it. And this is of course, what we're gonna be using in our final example on the saucepan. Uh, and then a final example here, this is of a, another sheet of sanded uh, metal. You can see in this way, uh, it, the light is going in that direction as well. Okay, cool. So um, those are a few um, ex real world examples. Um, there's, yeah, brushed metal, vinyl, uh, that one's pretty common. Um, base of a fry pan, velvet technically, but then there's a velvet shader as well. So be cautious about using it on fabric. I haven't really found much use for it myself. Uh, and then you've got CDs and all sorts of stuff like that. So it does have a lot of uses, but basically only use it 
when the surface that you're trying to create has a grain. So if it's been sanded, essentially, like with, if you could just imagine like a piece of sandpaper paper that's gone across it, if that's what you're trying to create, then that's when you use it. If it's not like that, if it's just a smooth surface, then just stick to the glossy shader. Anyway, those are a few things. Uh, this is the example I showed you at the start, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to create right now. So go ahead, open up Blender. Let's do that right now. And although modeling the saucepan isn't really a part of this tutorial, um, basing off the feedback that I've received um, in the past from you guys, uh, I know you don't like using a starter file. So we're gonna actually go ahead and model the saucepan. It's gonna be really easy, like one minute. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna start with a cylinder and we'll set this, the amount of vertices to just 16, as I've got right there. And I'm gonna scale this down along the Z axis, just like that. So about the height of a saucepan, I guess. Yeah, about that, that's pretty good. And I'm gonna delete this top face, and I want that to be like a lip, just down like towards the bottom to about there. And so this lip is just gonna sort of be like indented, like a little bit like that, you know, like the base of saucepans. I don't know how much time you guys have spent in the kitchen. I did a hospitality course when I was in high school. Learned some very, well, helpful things, but I've forgotten most of it, so that wasn't really good. But anyway, um, so now I've got this, uh, I've got a little lip that I've just created around the top there as well. And I'm gonna hit Control 2, and that's going to add a Subsurf modifier. Uh, now I want to smooth out this bottom here. Well, not smooth it, but make it more, I don't know what you call it, crisper, tighter? I don't know, you know. Um, just to create a nice sharp edge there, I guess. And then towards the top, another loop there as well. Okay, and I also I'm just going to select these two, oh, one at a time, whoa, 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 everything's going on. I'll select these edge loops here, and I'm just going to turn on the mean crease for those, those two, just like that, and there we go. So that is the saucepan, essentially. Uh, there, actually, I'll just create one, just a little small lip, just around the base of it, like that. Uh, and that's just so that that radial pattern isn't too distorted because if you don't have enough vertices there, it can kind of get weird. So just creating a little, um, I don't know, extrusion just inwards a little bit, as you can see right there. Okay, cool, awesome. Now you've got that. Um, now before we actually get into the shader, um, it helps to be able to see what what the settings and stuff that you're actually adding to it. And in order to do that, you need to set up lighting. Now you could go ahead and add in a whole bunch of lights and stuff like that, but the shader works best when you've got a lot of different reflections happening. So the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and just use an environment map. So if you're looking at the world settings, um, if you click on color and then select environment texture, what you can do is go ahead and load in an HDR image. So there's a bunch of these online. This is one of the free ones. I'm using Kitchen Probe, which is very appropriate for ours, I think. And I'll just turn down the strength of that to be 0.5 because it comes a little bit, uh, a little bit too amped, um, just straight out of the box. So something like that. So let's have a look at this just in rendered view mode so we can see. Yeah, you've got really nothing there. It's just a diffuse shader currently. So I'll go ahead and I'll just save this right now. Let's just set this to tester. And I'll also click on GPU as well. So we've got it not nice and faster. Okay, cool. So we can go ahead and add a new material now. And then from the surface type, if you're using the latest version 2.65, you will see you have anisotropic BSDF. So go ahead and click on that. And now down here, this is the uh, node editor here, by the way, node editor. Um, down here, you can see you've got this new little shader. So I'll just explain explain briefly what these settings do. So the roughness value is the uh, basically the blurriness of the reflections. So that actually needs to be higher than zero. If it's zero, you'll just see crisp, glossy reflections, as you can see we have right here. Um, oh, by the way, if you see this happen with the saucepan, like these little patterns along the bottom there, just scale it up. I'm not sure why that happens, but just needs to be a little bit more scaled up than it is currently. Uh, anyway, so that, that gloss, glossiness needs to be higher than zero. So let's just turn that up to be 0.1. Uh, now the anisotropy value, that is the amount of actual um, stretchingness of the, um, of, of the light. So if you had this at zero, 
Let's just set that to zero. You would essentially have a glossy shader, just a basic out of the box glossy shader. So by turning that up, I normally set it to around about 0.9. Um, you will get something which looks a lot more like, oh, one more thing. Uh, with our environment texture in the background, um, you want to make sure that you change it from equi rectangular to mirror ball for that HDR. Um, because as I zoomed up, then I could see a big black hole, um, which was uh, a telltale sign that I used the wrong mapping. Anyway, getting complicated. Let's stay on track. Um, so setting that up to be about 0.9, you get the correct stretching of the uh, of the light. You can set up to one, but anyway. Uh, you've got rotation, now that is used sparingly, I think, but that's just for a manual rotation of that light bending, so I haven't really used that. Uh, the normal map, that allows you to add in bump mapping. So if you wanted to go ahead and do that, you can. Uh, for this one, there is no bump, so we won't be doing that. Uh, and then you've got tangent. Now that is the most important one, and that will define how the light actually bends around. Um, so what you plug into this tangent value, you can use an image texture if you want, but it gets a little bit complicated there. That's sort of a complex sort of thing. Um, but normally what you'll be using is a tangent node, and you plug that in like that. Now by default, you actually don't need that, uh, and by default it will use radial. So if you just have that nothing there, it will use radial. So you can see under here at the base of it, you can't really see actually because it's kind of... Uh, it's not really picking up much light from down there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Alt-D. Alt-D, by the way, will create a copy of it, but it will keep all the settings the same. So that if I change something over here, then the example stays the same over there. Anyway, so Alt-D. And then if I just rotate this, just so that I've got it one end up like that, and go into rendered view mode. There you go. You can see now you have that radial anisotropic shading. And that's it. End of tutorial, guys. Um... <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's, as I said, it's really, really super duper easy um, to get it to work. Um, now, there is actually something wrong with this shader at the moment because although it looks great from the base, um, actually around the side of it, uh, it's actually going to be using the radial type as well. But the way it's set up currently is that uh, if, you, if it was to be UV unwrapped, you would have somewhere in here which would... Be, it would sort of be bulging inwards towards, um, as in the light would be wrapping around. Because this, like there's a center, there's a center where all the light is sort of going towards. And although you can't really see much of it along here, there should be a point in there where it's kind of like warping a little bit. At least if that's if it's done by UV. Anyway, so what we should do is we should have a radial type along the base there, and then you should have a linear anisotropic shading around the rest of it. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now this linear type that I'm going to show you how to do right now is how you will also um, create brushed metal. Like if you just wanted a brushed metal surface, this is how you would do that as well. So it's very helpful to learn. So this top one here, I'll just call this one radial. And I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to copy the same settings, but I'm going to click that little value there. So we've got the same settings. I'll just call this one linear. Now what we do with this one is we use a tangent shader as well. We plug this in. But what we want to do is to set the direction to be not radial, but UV map. Uh, and what this will do is it will actually allow us to define where, which direction the light should be bending as opposed to just being by default on radial. So that's why we need to UV unwrap it. So UV unwrapping it will actually allow us to, uh, yeah, to define that. So let's go to the UV image editor. And I'll just click on this one here. By having these as copies, by the way, like like they're copying the same values as each other, um, I'll be able to UV unwrap one and have the exact same settings applied to the other one. So that's just uh, just letting you know that. Okay, so easiest way to UV unwrap this cylinder is just from front view mode. If I just go U and then select cylinder projection, I now have it UV unwrapped. Perfect. Um, and you can see that along here, you've got this kind of like row that's kind of going out to the side. That's actually the base like this area right along the base there. So an easy way to UV unwrap just that area is from front view, uh, from top view mode. If I just hit project from view bounds, now I have a perfectly UV unwrapped base as well as the rest of it. So I've now got them overlapping, but that's fine. Um, and what I want to do is I want this material linear to apply to just our base material. So let's just select those and I'll click on assign. And let's just check that works. Click select, there you go, that's collected there. And then I've got the rest of it, which is now using radial. Perfect. Okay, cool. So now that I've got that, looking at our linear material here, I guess I can click. Oh, one other thing I guess I should have said. Um, 
the way, because this is uh, what this will do, this tangent node using the UV map, if I just go ahead and select that, um, it will use this UV map to define the direction um, of that anisotropic shader. Um, but the way the direction goes is it goes vertically, so from up down like that. So if you wanted that reflection to be stretched around, like horizontally around the source bin, then what you should do is select that like that and then rotate it by 90 degrees. And then you will change the direction of that anisotropic shader. So that's just a little tip there for you. But we want it just to behave exactly as it is um, right now. So now, if we have a look at it, we probably won't see much change, but at least it is technically correct right now. Um, and actually, the base of our material here is just kind of, uh, just kind of gone off and done its own things. Let's add a tangent shader. Let's drop that in to the tangent point. Actually, did I do it the wrong way? I think I did, didn't I? Select. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, I assigned the wrong material, like the exact wrong way around. So let's just fix that, shall we? Okay. Linear is supposed to be around the walls of it, and then radial should be the base. I'm sure a lot of you watching that at home were screaming out at me, No, don't do it. You've got it around the wrong way. Well, you were right. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't hear you from that monitor. But that's it, guys. That's it. Ta-da! It is now done and dusted. So uh, that's a very brief, very quick introduction to a cool new shader using uh, cycles. So I'm really happy that this is finally here because we can now do this fancy stuff. Um which you previously couldn't. Um, and actually, there is a, one more thing I might show you. Um, so if you zoom in on here, you can see that you would have a very clean, very uh, nice looking, you know, warped radial shader thing. But if you technically, if you wanted to, to look really realistic, like in, uh, in my example, you can see right here, you can see that if you zoom in on that, you'd actually be able to see the grain in which that's actually going around. Now, the way I did that is I actually used a texture which I created myself. So I just go ahead and add in an image texture. So I created a texture using Photoshop. I just added in a noise and then I used the radial blur in Photoshop and I just created my very own brushed metal radial texture. This one right here. And then if I plug this into that color input right there, you can see that you can now actually see the grain. And if the grain is a little bit too heavy, like it's too black as it is currently, I can then just add in a color ramp node and then I'll just turn down this black value, make it more of a grayish color, something like that. Um, then that, then you would have it. That's it. And then if you really wanted to, you could also, let's just add in, uh, where is it? Vector, vector converter math. We could actually make this apply to the bump mapping. Just kind of cheating because it's really what the anisotropic shader should be doing. Um, but I just give that a really, really super low value of like 0 0.001. That will actually alter the render times. It will kind of like amp it up a little bit. But you get just a tiny, insy little bit of grain in there, which just kind of helps to sell the realism just a little bit more. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you learned something. It's very quick um, and it's designed, I designed this tutorial to be like that, so you guys can venture off and create some cool materials. Um, if you create something cool, by all means, link it in the comments below. And that is all from me. I will see you next time.